Chapter 2 continued. But next morning all the farmers were shouting with anger. Where were their tractors, their earth diggers, their ploughs, their harrows? From every farm in the region all the steel and iron farm machinery had gone. Where to? Who had stolen it all? There was a clue. Here and there lay half a wheel, or half an axle, or half a mudguard, carved with giant tooth marks where it had been bitten off. How had it been bitten off? Steel bitten off? What had happened? There was another clue. From farm to farm, over the soft soil of the fields, went giant footprints, each one the size of a single bed. The farmers, in a frightened, silent, amazed crowd, followed the footsteps. And at every farm the footprints visited, all the metal machinery had disappeared. Finally, the footprints led back up to the top of the cliff, where the little boy had seen the Iron Man appear the night before when he was fishing. The footprints led right to the cliff top and all the way down the cliff were torn marks on the rocks where a huge iron body had slid down. Below the tide was in, the grey empty moving tide. The Iron Man had gone back to the sea. So the furious farmers began to shout, the Iron Man had stolen all their machinery. Had he eaten it? Anywhere he had taken it, it had gone. So what if he came again? What would he take next time? Cows? Houses? People? They would have to do something. They couldn't call the police or the army because nobody would believe them about this iron monster. They would do something for themselves. <laughs>